There's another question here, and then you have this. Hi, hi. Um, well, first, I want to tell you that I've never been so engaged in a, any sort of presentation on economics yeah, before, so thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> How did you realize that this was the avenue for you to make the biggest impact using your skills and your like strengths? Is what is there a moment or something that you read or? <laughs> Good question. Let's get to your question. I want to hear the questions first, and I'll definitely answer that. You one, two, three. Good question. We have two and a half minutes. I'm just curious. It seems like lots of things are popping up to connect. Uh -huh. Do you think it almost creates clutter in the system by like no. a bunch of I no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. you have the capacity. Think about a 14-year-old girl, and you say, well, what's going on in your social group? The amount of complexity is way, way, way more complicated than a stock analysis, <laughs> right? And we have the capacity. It's just trusting <clears throat> that we can handle it. It's not clutter. It's not clutter in your mind. <laughs> Facebook. I've got a thousand friends, and I can. Uh, I'm interested in the relationship between ideas and status and power. And I was wondering if you could give us maybe your quick analysis on how uh, the recent critiques of fundamentalist capitalism, like neoliberal capitalism, mm -hmm. how that sort of succeeded with like Joseph Stiglitz and Paul Krugman and things of that sort. Mm -hmm. That's a long discussion. We, we read these books. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk with you about that later. And I want to get back to your question. I wanted to ask you, what do you suggest for people who have smaller amounts of money? Come to me afterwards. Okay. So, well, how did I what? Like, right? <laughs> I remember in the mid of the 90s, before I really got clear that I wanted to do socially responsible investing, I was providing services to clients that didn't care about these issues, but I did. And I was really questioning what I should be in this business. But I kept, I went to myself. You know, I practice meditation nearly every day for 30 years. So I just, it's a continuing process of what uh, I think Socrates said, know thyself, that it's a lifelong journey. Just keep peeling the layers of the enemies back as they're infinite. Right? Know thyself, trust yourself. I am the miracle, you are the miracle. Trust yourself and listen to what your heart is guiding to. Listen to your intuition. 95% of our nervous system is unconscious. 5% of what we call our mind or our consciousness is conscious. So listen to what's going on in this larger intelligence. Heart math institutes doing a lot of work along this line. But the intelligence of the heart, mind, brain, system. So how did I get to this point? I just continued to trust myself on my journey and follow the thread and just feel into, does this feel right? At each step of the journey, does this feel right? No, I'm going to go here. Okay. Does this feel right? No, let's go this way. Right? Just trusting the integrity of myself. Because if you notice that when you go to school, what's the right answer? What's the wrong answer? Do you know? Do you not? Or well, the teacher knows, or the book knows. Well, there's value in that, not diminishing that. Yet there's also there's something that you already know without having to be taught anything. And that's something that's overlooked in the system. And that's you and your power and your intelligence and your capacity. <coughs> so that's your greatest wealth. You have 99% power with that. You have 1% power outside yourself. So just go for it. Trust how great you are. Okay. Um, it's similar to the gentleman in the back's question. Um, how can you make this mainstream? How can you, I mean, how are you going to reach middle of America, small towns? I, mean, I feel like you have to have a certain level of education. I got it. So here's my thought. Those that you're trying to change, that mindset, wake up to where you have that mindset inside your own thinking. Wake up to the schism, the separation, the idea that there's us and them, that there's some assumptions that you're afraid to evaluate in yourself. Things that you say, well, that's tried and true belief, but is it really so? Look at those beliefs that you have. Challenge yourself. Question Learn. Be willing to go into the unknown and say, I don't know, and I'm willing to change. Or, gee, I don't want to look at that belief because it just is comfortable, but you know, maybe it's not so. When you have a vocabulary and a capacity for transforming your own thought and evolving your own thinking where you're afraid to 
let go of a concept that is part of your identity, when you have that capacity to evolve and take the child of your consciousness and let it grow and learn into new things that are scary and unknown, then you have the capacity to talk with somebody who is in that mindset, who is resisting change. right? And then you can guide them because you've learned the capacity of how to, what I say, parent yourself and parent civilization into a new level of maturity. So it's less about what we're going to do to convince them, but look at where they are already in our psyches and how can we address that part of our psyche that is unaddressed in whatever part of our life. Because if there's a problem out there, there's a problem in here, but in a different way. And it's about how to evaluate what that problem, what, what the pattern recognition between what's out there in that relationship and what's here in my relationship with my own psyche. And look at the distinction of why I think that is a problem is because there's something going on inside me that has a corresponding pattern. So I go, well, let's look at where that corresponding pattern inside of me can be shifted. And then once I learn how to shift that, then I can engage in that and should help shift that. And then you can engage in a process of transformation, the caterpillar becoming a butterfly. Nothing a caterpillar looks like a butterfly. People would often say to me, we should be public speaking. I say, I'm talking right now. <laughs> it's enough. This is enough. The trusting that your transformation is enough because you're already interacting with everybody around you and what they're doing. You are literally connected to millions of people already. So there's no mainstream you have to broadcast to. You just have to be more of who you are. And I think that's it. Great question. So I'm here. <laughs>